So good morning or good afternoon or good evening or whenever it is that you're actually uh, watching this. Uh, it's really nice to be with you. My name's Kath Milnes. I'm one of the wardens at St Stephen's uh, here in Moulton. Um, I need to start with the slight apology. If you can hear the odd bit of background noise, it's because the water board are doing a bit of drilling. Uh, it's nothing to do with me. I have actually uh, removed the cat. This is the second time we've filmed this, thanks to the cat getting involved. So hopefully we will have a time of reflection and prayer and worship. Let's open in prayer. As the sheep who hear the voice of their shepherd, so we hear you call, O Lord our God. Guide us and protect us, be our light in the darkness, now and always. Amen. So we're going to start with a time of worship. Uh, it's that great song, The Lord's My Shepherd, from Psalm uh, 23. I just need to set this up because we've already had one go at this. <laughs> God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple, acceptable to you, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So while we're in our sort of time of prayer, we come to our time of confession where we are honest with ourselves about all the ways that we've fallen short. Lord God, our Maker and our Redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. We have heard the good news of Christ but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. We have not loved you with our whole heart nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sins. So may the almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So our Bible reading uh, this morning is uh, from Ezekiel 34. Um, I asked Margaret if she would do the reading for me, hoping very much that this will actually work. We've had a few technical hiccups with this so far, so I'm just going to see if I can make it work. Today's reading is Ezekiel 34 verses 11 to 16. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep, and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, a reflection on uh, the reading. Thank you, Margaret, so much for that. That was, uh, that was super. And there is a point to our little fluffy-faced friends here. So those of you who pay attention to these sort of things will think, hang on a minute, that was not the reading set for today. And you're absolutely right, it wasn't. Um, today, the readings are about the prophets. Now, don't get me wrong, I think that there is still a powerful spirit of prophecy. Um, and even if, if you're looking at this with sort of raised eyebrows and don't like the supernatural elements of that, if you think about all the people who have warned us about what we're doing to the environment, the, the, the way that we, we are living in, in the created order and, and abusing that, the way that we're treating animals, in a way you have to say that these people who've been warning us for years are prophets and unfortunately what they said has come true. But actually tomorrow is the feast day of Saints Peter and Paul. And this is the reading for tomorrow. And when I read it, there was just something about it that really spoke to me. Um, one, because the image of the shepherd is one that is all the way through the Bible. Over and over and over again, we see it. 
the, the very first sort of historical human being that we see in the Bible, Abraham, counts his wealth by his flocks. And at one stage he has so many sheep that him and his nephew fall out and have to separate. We think about um, his, his grandson, Jacob, who worked as a shepherd for 14 years to win the love of his life, Rachel. Um, David, little David, who fought Goliath, had a job looking after sheep. Over and over we see this, um, this image of the shepherd. Now what's really interesting is in the ancient world, um, shepherds were low status. And yet, the flocks represented wealth. The more flocks you had, the more wealthy that you were. Um, and it's really important to remember that because it means that shepherding, whilst low status, is actually about caring for something of absolute worth. What made me really think about this was a news report I saw this week about these chaps and, and a farmer who, who was actually choosing to breed these. I think they're called black-faced valois sheep. Don't quote me on that. Are they cute though? And he actually said that th the reason he was doing them is because they were uh, cute and fluffy and people were prepared to pay an awful lot of money for them. So what I wanted to do this morning is, is go back to that image of shepherdry and think about things that perhaps we've become a bit complacent with. The other reason, of course, is our Ezekiel reading, God says, I am going to do the shepherding. I am going to be the shepherd for my flocks. Jesus described himself as the good shepherd. So there is something about this job that is tied in with who God and Jesus are and what they do. So what do I want us to focus on? First of all, I want us to focus on the idea that the shepherd cares for something of value. Now, we, we live, you know, not so far away from sheep. I'm fairly sure that if you spoke to their owners, of course they represent a value to him. But I want us to push that further. These sheep represent wealth. The more sheep there are, the wealthier the person. And that means that each and every she sheep is precious. Now, I really think we need to focus on that because very often when we, we judge ourselves by the world's standards, how much money we're making, how important our job is, how big a house we've got, we can see ourselves as worthless. And if you take away nothing from, from this morning, I, I want you to not think like that. You are priceless. You are worth so much to God, so much so that he was prepared to lay down his life and die for you. That's how much you are worth. The, the shepherd sees himself as guarding wealth. You are priceless. The second point is that unfortunately sheep need rescuing. Sheep are daft. Um, only yesterday I noticed three naughty sheep sitting in the potato field, um, little rebels escaping there. They, they do get up to all sorts of things. Um, the Bible is, is filled with stories of, of sheep needing rescuing from rocky places, high places. They, they are world-class experts at getting themselves into trouble. Um, they have no natural defensive features. And there is an awful lot of beasties out there with big teeth and claws who are very, very good at eating sheep. And that means they need somebody who is prepared to go out on a limb and rescue them. Well, God is prepared to rescue you and me because we are his flock. And, and if we make a mess of things and we get into trouble, we shouldn't think that we can't turn to God, admit that and accept his rescue because he will rescue us. We aren't worth less because we've done something stupid. Thirdly, is that sheep get lost and injured. Um, this, this image of lostness 
is one that, that really speaks to me quite often. And I think it's worth bearing in mind that some of the parables that Jesus told talk about the extravagant lengths that the good shepherd will go to to find his lost sheep. It could be that particularly at the moment you do feel lost. You've perhaps lost a job that gave you a sense of worth and purpose and you really don't know who and what you are anymore. It could be that you've lost family, friends, and those, those relationships are causing you to feel utterly lost. How do I feel about these things? Well, the Good Shepherd wants to reach out to you. He wants to bring you home. You don't need to stay lost. The last point I make is this. Sheep suffer. And they suffer because, one, they might get barged and pushed by bigger, fatter sheep. But also, not all sheep have equal opportunities to get to things. And the Good Shepherd recognises this and will wade in where there is injustice. If there is a bigger, fatter sheep barging out to the other ones and stopping them getting pasture, the Shepherd notices this and evens it up. And not only that, but if we look at some of the other stories associated with shepherding, there is something stricter still, and that is judgment. One of the best known parables in the New Testament is the parable of the sheep and the goats, where the shepherd goes through his flocks and he separates out. Now this is an image that Jesus' contemporary audiences would understand. Sheep are good for one thing, goats are good for something else. But he makes it very, very clear that this period of judgment is really looking at those who have done what they were supposed to be doing. Now, as, as Mark preached um, a couple of weeks ago, sometimes when we look at the world, we see huge injustices. And it makes us ponder, wh where is God in this? We need to be really careful, those of us who are doing very, very well out of the world, and not think that we're getting away with it. Um, God sees. He sees those who are being treated with injustice. He sees those who are being oppressed. And there is going to be a judgment. And if anything else, we sometimes need to sort of fight this complacency that I'm okay, um, but I'm deliberately closing my eyes to where I see oppression and injustice. We need to do something. And even if we feel small and helpless and unimportant, we need to step up to the plate and do what we can to be true members of God's flock. Because as he says in this uh, passage from Ezekiel, God's flock is spread about and God wants to gather them together and he wants them to be part of ultimately of one um, unified whole but they're dotted around not the only way of being a Christian is the way we do it okay so step up to the plate yes why because you are so precious and even if you've made a mess and even if you're feeling insignificant you're not and there's always a way back to God. Amen. Oh, and incidentally, these bad boys go between 500 and 1,000 pounds each. There you go, told you you were precious. So, if we're able to, shall we declare our faith in God? Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, we're going to spend a little time in prayer. I've given 
what I think are some of the themes of prayer that have come out of our readings and reflections today. So in each case, I'm going to make a suggestion, but then I'm going to need a little pause for you to put your own prayers in there. So Father, we come to you this morning, many of us with our hearts filled with worries and concerns. But we bring it all to you and we put it into your hands. Lord, we offer up to you in our prayers the lost. Those who have lost their way, those who have lost their job, those who have lost relationships. Lord, we know that you stand on the road and you wait for the lost. Hear us as we offer up to you the names of the lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up to you the frightened. Although many of the restrictions are being lifted, there is still great fear for many people. We pray particularly for the shielded group, those particularly vulnerable to the virus. But we pray also for those who are fearful for economic reasons who perhaps are wondering how they're going to pay their rent or their mortgage or their bills. We pray for those who are fearful about the state of their, their relative's health. We pray for those who are frightened about their own health. Lord, we just lift up to you those who are frightened. Be their comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up to you the lonely. Many people are still locked away in their houses, especially those who are shielding. And Lord, we know and give thanks for the fact that the good care and treatment and the sensible precautions that have been taken mean that many of us can now draw back together. But we do think today particularly of those who are still alone. Lord, give them a sense of your presence as well as ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we do lift up to you the sick. We give thanks for the wonderful care of the doctors and nurses who have worked so hard to care for those struck by coronavirus. But we also lift up to you those who are struggling with other health conditions that perhaps have been pushed to one side in all of this. We pray that they would get the treatment that they would need and that you'd be with them and their families and friends and that they actually know truly that they're not alone in this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift up to you the shepherds. We pray for those in particular who are trying to balance um, the care their flock, our vicars, our priests, our ministers who are having to come to grips with changes all the time. We give thanks that the churches can now all open for prayer, but we do pray particularly for those who are leading these changes. Lord, it's been just as hard on them as it's been on anybody else. And we pray especially for the leadership at St Stephen's. We give thanks for the work of Mark and Margaret, but we pray that you hold them, give them, give them
and rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, ultimately we bring to you ourselves, with all our frailties and all our flaws. But whatever we are and whoever we are, we pray that you would strengthen us and you would make us into what we could be to further your kingdom and see justice flow through your land. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we pray the way that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we've got um, another song, a uh, last chance to worship. shall we finish with the blessing that's on all of us. May the Lord our God lead us to green pastures and still waters. May the Lord our God restore our souls. 
May the Lord our God walk beside us where the path grows dark. May we know his comfort and in knowing this, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.